Hey guys, Tony here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. In this video, we're going to take a look at the pros and cons of owning a dedicated home theater. While it's exciting to contemplate building a cinema in your home, once you've made the decision, usually what happens, you start to realize that a dedicated room is a serious investment in time, money and space, and that can be a little daunting. So I should define what I mean by a dedicated home theater, and that is to me a room with four walls, not open or part of a family room or dining room, but a dedicated space specifically for the purpose of a home theater. So let's start with the pros. The essence of a dedicated room is to create something reminiscent of going to a big movie theater, and most rooms that I see are some form of replicating that experience. Even in a small or average size dedicated room, you can still put a 100 to 120 inch screen fairly easily, and this really elevates the viewing experience. And even if you choose a TV, you can get a pretty large screen now for a pretty decent cost. Personally, I prefer a projector over a TV, which I have discussed in other videos, but bang for buck and the end result for me is much better with a projector. There are so many projectors on the market these days with a choice of native 4K costing tens of thousands down to pixel shifting 1080p projectors which are certified for producing 4K images. If you have a partner you will know it's almost impossible to get them to agree to a screen that large in a living room and the amount of ambient light would also make it difficult to enjoy as the picture would be washed out. So a dedicated room is great for not only having a big picture but for me the biggest advantage of all is having a multi-channel speaker setup. For the same reasons I just mentioned, it's very difficult to get consensus in a shared environment to have a big speaker setup on display. And also, if it's an open room, there will be issues getting your surrounds and overhead speakers in the optimal position. A dedicated room will give you better opportunities to position your speakers according to specifications, such as Dolby Atmos, which is a very popular format and caters for surround speakers and overhead speakers as well. So if something is moving around the screen or coming from overhead, you can really hear it and experience it in the way you would if you were in a big theater. Having a dedicated space allowed me to put a wall of sound behind my screen with the Crix MX-10s, which are identical left, center, and right speakers with spacer panels to push them out wider and also have dual subwoofers in the mix as well. These speakers sitting up behind the screen add to the immersion and realism. When you're watching a movie, you don't even think about it as the sound will be coming from directly where it is on the screen. Having four walls in the room is also a big advantage as you can put surround speakers in the optimal position for the best audio experience. For this reason alone, having a dedicated space is great as being able to position speakers in the correct locations is something that most of us in this hobby have come to appreciate for greater levels of immersion, excitement and enjoyment during movie time. Another pro of having a dedicated space is that it allows you to be as creative as you like. Often home theaters I see have themes or fancy decor and usually it's not possible to have a bunch of posters out in your living room. So having a dedicated space allows you to hide the room while still being able to enjoy it. I cannot emphasize this enough. In my own personal case, my house was a brand new build and my wife wanted to decorate it according to modern standards and a big black room with ugly seats her words, not mine, were just not going to fly in our main living room. So being able to create the most immersive space for watching movies was great as it's hidden behind four walls and a door. Mind you, I love how the room looks personally. I leave the lights on and the star ceiling on as I enjoy looking at it when I walk past. I guess my room is kind of plain compared to some of the themed rooms I've seen, like my buddy Matt's room. And that's an example of how you can have a themed room in your home that doesn't detract from the rest of the decor. It gives you an opportunity to decorate it in a way that is not usually acceptable in a common area where you can put recliners, posters and other fancy lighting as well. I especially enjoy the DIY star ceiling that I set up with the help of my dad and my wife. I often chill out in the room just watching the stars even if I'm not going to watch anything which is only possible because of the way that I finished the room. On a personal level I knew when I was building my house that I wanted a real theatre vibe from my room and the rest of my house is very white with square set cornices and high ceilings light colors and my room is a stark contrast to that so having it in a dedicated space really helped me achieve the look and experience that i was going for 
Having a space that you can escape to and chill out is really important. I have a busy family life and sometimes it's nice to be able to get into the theatre room, close the door and have a time out, especially if there is a new movie I have on disc and I want to watch it in peace without interruption. Being in a dedicated room means you can close the doors, crank up the volume and watch a movie in relative comfort without distraction. This is uniquely different to having a living room set up where there is a lot of potential noise and ambient light which can wreck the experience. Some of the bigger blockbusters, like recently I was watching the new James Bond movie, it really felt like I was at the cinema, the immersion was fantastic and with the audio calibrated for the main seat I got the full experience and eye candy which brought some of the excitement that you get when you're about to watch a big budget film at the cinema but I was in my own home. This is just not possible in a living room and I do have a better than average setup in my living room with my Crix Nufonics and Epicentrics tower and center speakers which I will add are actually my favorite speakers that I own but they don't give the same experience as my MX-10s do in my dedicated room. If you are intent on getting the best critical viewing and audio experience, having a dedicated room really helps you get to as close to that goal as your budget and constraints of the room will allow. Ultimately, it's up to you to weigh up these factors for yourself to see how important they are to you as everyone will have a different scale. And this leads me to the cons of owning a dedicated home theater. The elephant in the room and usually the biggest limiting factor in setting up a dedicated home theater is the cost. If you're interested, I did make a video on this and I'll leave a card up above, but usually this is one of the biggest cons. When you make a decision to build a dedicated room, it can be really overwhelming. When you realize all of the things that you need to install in the room, such as speakers, a projector, receiver, processor, amplifiers, Blu-ray players, and acoustic treatment, lighting, and much more. Having an idea of what you want to spend very quickly evaporates as you realize that one or two of these items can chew up your entire budget. And so more often than not, it becomes a very frustrating time because you want to do it, but lack of funds or the lack of design to spend those funds will begin to take away from the excitement of the project. My advice here is to educate yourself on what is involved in setting up a dedicated home theater. There are plenty of videos out there on YouTube, including my own channel that discuss all of the various components necessary to build a home theater. And it's the kind of thing that you can scale up to as well. I see a lot of people turned off or disappointed when they realize the cost involved and I try to encourage them to make a plan before even thinking about spending any money. There is a lot you can do to plan for your dedicated room and often it's possible to do things like pre-wire for more speakers so instead of compromising on cheaper or inferior speakers you can start with a good left center and right with a pair of surrounds to get a 5.1 setup but pre-wire for overheads and rear surrounds so that for example you could have a 7.2.4 setup. I have personally added to my setup over time rather than replace things. So don't be discouraged. There are opportunities to start off slow and then keep adding to the system over time. And on that point, it's often more fun to do it this way so that you can appreciate all of the changes and have something to look forward to. Again, education is key here. It's very easy to get overwhelmed or rush in and buy speakers and projectors before you have a chance to think things through. Because what happens a lot in this hobby is we get excited about speakers and projectors and miss important things like speaker position, layout of the room, seated position, how many rows you're going to need and the size of the screen. Most of these things you can work out before you spend any money. So take some time to plan out the space, speaker configuration, layout, and the other things I mentioned, which don't cost you anything and will help you to scale your budget to the end result you're trying to achieve. If you want to learn more, I have a whole playlist on this subject, as well as you can join my Discord server where I have a growing community of home theater enthusiasts who have all gone through these exact same issues and can help and share their knowledge and experience. I will have links to Discord down in the description. One of the most critical factors with a dedicated room is space. In most cases, you will need to either repurpose an existing room or battle with your significant other over where you can build the room. Everyone's circumstances will be different, but often taking a whole room out of your home for a dedicated home theater that you may only use a couple of times a week can be seen as overkill and could be a deterrent in moving forward. I think the purpose of a dedicated room is so that you can create the best possible movie watching experience, which means having four contained walls, being able to implement lighting control, and having a multi-channel audio system with a screen as large as you can fit within the space and the optimal viewing angle.
In America, I know it's very common in some states to have a basement. They are virtually non-existent here in Australia. So we need to more often than not use a spare bedroom, which is usually only three by three or four by four meters at the most, and a square, which is not ideal acoustically, but we make do with what we have. So lack of space or having to chew up space in your home is often a deterrent and something to consider before deciding on a dedicated space. And in those situations, it may be better to look at working within a shared space and using a big TV with some tower speakers to at least elevate the movie watching experience. I know this will sound a little opulent, but I've managed to set up three different spaces in my home for movie watching. And in my defense, this is partially because I have a YouTube channel and need to be able to demonstrate different setups and products. But also I do have a very understanding wife. My living room setup consists of Crix New Phonics and Epicentrics front soundstage and a Sony 75 inch TV. And if I wasn't able to have a dedicated room, this would still be a fantastic way to watch movies and we often do. Upstairs I have my ultra short throw setup with a 100 inch screen and it's a great balance between a casual space and a dedicated space and it allows me to test out new ultra short throw projectors and other home theater products in a quick and easy way. This setup is in pieces at the moment as I'm waiting for a new cabinet and I will be doing a video on it in a couple of weeks once I have the new cabinet set up. So yes space or lack thereof can be a bit of a con when it comes to setting up a dedicated home theater. So when it comes to time, this can be taken a couple of ways. The first is that this hobby can take a lot of time with researching and then actual installation and setup of the room. If you are time poor, it could be worthwhile hiring someone to help you out. But either way, it's not something that will happen very quickly if you want to build the room to any particular standard. The other issue is actually trying to find time to use the room. I know in the two years I've had my room that I go through varying phases where sometimes I get to use the room a number of times in a week, while sometimes I will not step into to the room for up to a month. So weighing up how much time versus the enjoyment factor of a dedicated room is really important to avoid disappointment. Speaking from personal perspective, while sometimes it feels that it's a waste to have a space because I simply don't have time to use the room, I easily balance that with the enjoyment factor I do get when I get to unwind and watch a movie. Especially when I have some friends over to watch something, it well and truly makes up for the lack of time I usually have. Plus, I do find myself going into the room just to chill out and relax on my volume and see your recliners, take a peek at the star ceiling and unwind. So guys, that's just a few of the pros and cons to owning a dedicated home theater. There are a lot more and I'm sure you will have your own ones. So why not share them down in the comments section below and let me know of any ones that I've missed. Check the links in the description to the playlist and links to some of my other videos. And as always, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you're not already, but that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.